Welcome to Nifty 50 Photographers. In this video I'm going to explain what is focal length and I'm going to give you some uh, ideas on which are the best lenses you want to use and what focal lengths of lens that you should be buying. If you're new to this channel I'm Richard Gill, I'm a professional photographer and on this channel I provide free photography tutorials for those of us who are a little bit older, those of us who've lost a bit of hair or certainly got a bit of grey in it. I post weekly videos every Friday and in those I explain how to get more out of your camera, how to compose and edit your photos uh, and how to get you to a stage where the image you had pictured in your head matches the image that appears on the back of your camera after you've pressed the shutter. Now if that sounds like you, please subscribe to the channel and join our community. Now if you stay to the end of this video, um, we're going to do a great little exercise that will really help you to understand what focal length is all about and what effect it has on depth of field and the composition and look of your images. Uh, now if you're not familiar with depth of field uh, or depth of focus, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, I covered this in an earlier video and I'll put a link in the description below um, so you can uh, check that out as well if you need to. Right, let's get started with the definition of focal length. You'll see the focal length is usually printed or stated on your lens in millimetres, somewhere on the barrel of the lens. And it's not the actual measurement or length of the lens, but it's a calculation of the distance from the point where the light rays converge to form a sharp image of an object on the sensor. And you can see what I mean in that in this uh, rather dodgy sketch coming up. Now, you don't need to fully understand that or, or worry about it too much. What we're interested in as photographers is the angle of view we get from our lens and the magnification we get from our lens. There's also an influence on the depth of field and the depth of focus. Uh, and that's what we're going to get a good understanding of today. The longer the focal length, the higher the magnification. Conversely, the shorter the focal length, the less the magnification. Now, with longer focal lengths, the angle of view becomes narrowed. And with shorter focal lengths, it opens up and becomes wider. There are two types of lenses that you're likely to use as a photographer. They can be zoom lenses, which are ones like this, which uh, you can change the focal length on. Or they can be fixed lenses or prime lenses where you can't change the focal length. It's set at one distance. Now most of you probably starting out with a kit lens. Now the kit lens is usually a zoom lens. Typically it'll be 18 to 55 millimeters, something of that nature. And that was probably what was supplied with your camera. Prime lenses, on the other hand, as I said, have a very uh, fixed lens and you'll see that they come in. This is a 55mm uh, and in fact one of the reasons I call this uh, channel Nifty 50s is because a 50mm prime lens um, is known as the Nifty 50 and, it, and it's a very popular lens to use. Now, as you might imagine, there are some uh, advantages and disadvantages of both types. So clearly with a zoom lens it's very flexible because you can change that focal length from widish angle to a narrower angle and it allows you to get closer or further away from your subject um, just with the one lens and without having to change lenses on your camera however the prime lens a uh, big advantage of it is generally they're smaller and lighter so they're much easier to carry around and because it's a fixed focal length then all the components inside, particularly the, the optical bits, are all optimised for that one focal length. So you get excellent image quality, very sharp photos. They also allow you to have um, usually some very wide apertures. This one goes to f1.8 for example, but you can easily get them going down to f1.4. So that means they're very good in low light situations, you can get away without uh, any flash and you can still get lovely sharp crisp photos 
Um, and you'll find that as you more you develop in photography, you, you will start to love prime lenses for that creative ability it gives. So we've talked about really three groups of lenses, so wide angle, standard and telephoto. And where would you use them? So wide angle lenses, because you've got that wide field of view, they would typically be used for landscape photographies because you want to get in uh, obviously as much of the landscape as you can. Um, but they're also used in architectural photography or taking building interiors, for example. Um, it's very rare that you would use those for something like a portrait um, because unless you're doing something like an environmental portrait where you really want to tell a story uh, and a lot of the stories in the background behind your subject. So standard lenses, those are ones like your kit lens. Um, where would you use those? Pretty much for anything you want. They just become a bit limited when you get to the extreme end. So you will use that for a lot of your uh, typical snapshots, um, typical photos that you take every day. And then the last chunk are the sort of uh, telephoto lenses. Um, and these usually have longer focal lengths to allow you to get closer to your subject when you might be prohibited from doing that. For example, uh, they're very good for wildlife photography or sports photography uh, where you want to really get into the action but physically you can't actually stand next to the action so you want to magnify that image and bring it closer to you. Now some typical focal lengths of those, so a wide angle lens would start at something like 10 millimeters. it might be 10 to 20, uh, a telephoto lens might be 70 to 200 or 70 to 300 for example and the ones in the middle literally uh, a very common lens uh, is one like this one which is 24 to 70 and you find a typical photographer would have something like um, for a full frame camera for example a wide angle lens going from maybe 14 to 24 or 16 to 35 then a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200 for the telephoto work uh, and that would make a typical uh, range. Now, occasionally you will use these in situations you wouldn't expect. So, for example, you could use a telephoto lens to take landscapes. And if you've seen those pictures where you see several layers of hills that all seem to be stacked uh, one behind the other, but quite close together in a way, that's done with a telephoto lens because it compresses um, the background into a into a shorter distance and that's how you get that sort of layering in a landscape photo. So you can use um, lenses that you wouldn't expect to use in different situations and that's part of being creative as a photographer. <clears throat> now you might hear some other photographers talking about some very specialist lenses, um, things like macro, uh, tilt shift, um, super wide angle and so on. But don't worry about those at the stage. It's something to get into as your photography develops and there's a lot of fun we can have with those. But I think the first thing to do is really get a better understanding of what focal length is and how you should be thinking about what focal length do I want to use when I'm taking a photo to give me um, the image that you're, you're picturing in your head. So we're gonna do um, two little practice things um, in, in just a moment. In the first one, uh, we're going to focus on understanding what field of view our lens gives and how that's affecting our depth of focus. So, uh, I was lucky enough to be able to take my wife along as a model for this. Um, so if you've got a friend or partner that uh, is willing to model for you, then uh, drag them out and uh, see if they'll help. Um, if you haven't, you can use anything that forms a nice subject for your photo, you know, even use your camera bag, cuddly toy, whatever you've got to hand. Now, I'm going along to, uh, to a local park just nearby, but you can equally do this uh, in, a, in a quiet street, um, so literally just outside your front door if you need to. What I want you to try and find, though, is a location that has got some things at different distances away, uh, both going from front to back of the scene and maybe left to right of the scene, so you can see what uh, of those objects you can get into your photo and what get cropped out as you change your focal length. So find yourself by that nice location, um, put your subject uh, in, a, in a safe position and you want to stand about 
three meters back from them so that's three good paces back from them and set your camera to a constant aperture so choose aperture mode um, and choose your widest aperture something like f4 and set your uh, if you've got a zoom lens set it to the widest um, sorry the shortest focal length that you've got so if it was your kit lens that'll be 18 millimeters and take your photo now without moving from where you are change now the zoom to something in the middle so if you've got your 18 to 55 that'll be uh, in the middle is around about 35 so now set the zoom to 35 millimeters by uh, twisting your barrel and take your second photo and then finally repeat that process with uh, with the longest focal length you've got so 55 millimeters if you're using a kit lens and take the same photo and you should finish up with three photos all taken from the same place and uh, when you come back and look at those you should be able to see the difference of your field of view moving in and your subject coming closer to you. Now, while you're still out there, you want to do your second exercise at the same time. And uh, in the second exercise, we're going to, um, this will help you understand how choosing a focal length can help you compose your image. So what I want you to do this time with your model is decide on how much of your model you want to fill the frame. In my case, I've literally d decided to do a head and shoulders portrait. So I've left a little bit of space at the top. I've chosen a point, um, which is the bottom of, uh, it's where Nick's scarf meets, um, where the two sides come together and form a, form a V point. I've chosen to frame that at the bottom of the image. And what you're going to do now is, is the same kind of thing. So set your focal length to its shortest, so 18 millimeters if you're on your kit lens, and stand as close as you need to to your model to be able to fill the frame in the way you've decided, you know, get that head and shoulders in. Take that shot. Again, keep your aperture the same. Um, and then now set your focal length to the, to the middle range, say 35 millimeters. Now this time you are the one that's gonna move. So you are gonna step back um, because the, you've got some magnification effect in the lens, so you'll need to take a step back to uh, fill the frame in the same way. Take that shot, and then finally repeat it with the lens at the longest focal length. Uh, again, you're going to have to step back further, uh, frame your shot in the same way, so you've got the same amount in the shot, and take that third shot. So you should now have another three shots all of the same subject, pretty much the same composition. You know, if it's a head and shoulders portrait, it will literally be head and shoulders portrait for three shots, but they will all look different because they've all been taken at different focal lengths. I've come to this park to try and show you what focal length means, especially when you're thinking about what lens to take with you when you're going out uh, taking photographs. And it's always a difficult decision what focal length am I going to need? And so hopefully in here, we're able to show you some photos at different focal lengths and what effect that has. Again, like most things in photography, it's a bit of a creative decision. So what you want happening to your foreground, middle ground and background. So we found a location in this uh, nice park near to my home. And uh, the reason I've chosen this location, if I turn the camera around, is you'll see I've got some houses over here to the right. Uh, I've got my nice helpful model, Nick, my wife here, and my trusty four-legged companion, Obi. But we've also got this big avenue of uh, oak trees as well. Now these are about 10 to 12 meters apart. So you should be able to see what different focal lengths do to them, how far apart they make them look, and uh, how some focal lengths will bring them closer together. So I'm going to start with a wide angle lens, so that's short focal length. This is actually a super wide lens, it goes from 12 to 24 and I'm on a full frame camera so you'll see uh, that it gives a uh, very wide uh, view and angle. 
Right, so I've got Nick stood by this um, avenue of trees and I've got my lens on. I'm in aperture priority, 100 ISO, and I've set it to f4. And you'll see we've got 12 millimeters, so you can see how far away the trees look. So I'm just going to move a bit to come get a better composition. So I've put Nick between the two trees and I'll take that picture. Right, and I'm going to do the same thing, but this time we're now going to 24 millimeters. So you can see the difference there. Are you ready, Nick? Yeah. Okay, I'll get that. Right, just going to change cameras here to get a different lens. Right, so as you can see, I've uh, Change my lens here. I've now got a 24 to 240. So you can see a big difference in the focal length. We've done our 24 shot. So I'm now going to do a 50. And what I'm looking to show here is what a difference it makes to the uh, field of view when you change your focal length. Um, and I'm just going to adjust my exposure a tiny bit here. And then there we go. You ready, Nick? One more, just for luck. That's it. So we're going to do our next one at 100. And I've taken these all stood in the same place. You see now Nick has come quite a bit closer to me. My field of view is quite a lot narrower. You notice the f-stop's changed. That's because of the way this lens behaves. It won't let me go to f4. It changes f-stop as you go up. So there's one at f5.6 and 100 and now we're going to go and take this up to around about two well i can't see exactly what 240 is here at the moment so i'm going to go straight to 240 and let's see again exactly what we've got here. You see how narrow the field of view is now at 240. All right, so you ready? Do another couple. That's it. So, so I've switched back to my wide angle lens here. I'm going to do this exercise now the opposite way round. And really why I want you to do this, it teaches you about not just zooming in and out, but it also teaches you to move because that's one of the key things when you're deciding on your composition. It's not just choosing the focal length, but it's choosing where you want to be. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to take the picture so that I get the same things in the frame every time. So I'm going to have to get really close to Nick to get this one. We're at 12 millimeters now, oh uncomfortably close. So I'm aiming for the bottom of her scarf, being the bottom of the frame, a little bit of sky above, and let's make sure you can see that guys and let's see if I can get closer still so that really a bit of sky above and I've really filled the frame with a photo and you can see how close I'm literally sorry our eyes were closed let's try again I'm literally about eight inches from Nick's face so now let's repeat the exercise I'm going to move this out to 24 and I'm going to do the same thing now. I've been able to step back about 12 inches, 30 centimeters in uh, new money to do the same thing again. Okay, that's nice. Just do that look again. We'll do one more. Okay, so now we'll change cameras and do the same. Right. So I've changed my back to my other lens. I've set this at about 50 millimeters, and we're going to do the same thing. So I was aiming for the bottom of the scarf, the bottom of my frame, and compared to the 24 millimeter, I'm probably another 30 centimeters further back. Are you ready, Nick? Yeah, that's nice. No blinking. I blinked. We can take another just in case you blinked. And there we go. So now let's go for 100 millimeters. And if you see, that's brought it too close. So what I need to do to get the same framing is step back. I've gone back three paces to get that. And ready, Nick? There we go. 
that's nice. Maybe I need to be a tiny bit closer. And there we go again. Right, now let's go for 240. And you see we have to go back one, two, three, four, about four paces to get the same thing. And whenever you're ready, Nick, yep. Yeah. Oh, blinked. Try again. One more shot. Oh, one more. It's quite hard to hold steady at um, the length. And that's it. So that's the model finished with, yes. So you should see that's brought me back from being right in Nick's face to about a distance of, uh, I don't know, four, three or four meters um, to get the same effect. Okay, so I'm uh, back from the little walk in the park and I'm just looking through these photos. So on the first one you can see, this is uh, taken at the fixed distance away from Nick. And I've done this on my super wide telephoto, so it's 12 millimeters. So in the right hand side of the image, you can see the, uh, uh, the buildings, uh, you can see all the tree avenue. And the trees themselves, even though they're sort of 10 or 12 meters apart, actually look to be quite spaced apart. And there's quite a lot of foreground in our image. The other thing you'll notice, even though I'm still only at f4, so you wouldn't expect a big depth of field or depth of focus, I have actually got a lot in focus you know everywhere from nick to those houses right in the background on the right hand side they still look um, pretty sharp now in this second image what you can see is now nick has come closer to me it's starting to crop in the field of view a bit um, the houses in the background uh, we've lost a little bit of those but everything is still nice and sharp we've got a very good depth of focus we're at 24 millimeters and f4 here now, in this next image, uh, we're up to 50 millimeters. And as you can see, now we've really only got the avenue of trees uh, in our image and we've started to lose the tree on the left-hand side. Um, so we've got a lot closer in. And you can start to see that actually our depth of focus is starting to fade away, particularly in the background. You see there's some people in the distance there. I'm not quite sure how far back they were. They were maybe 30, 40 meters away. But they've started to, to go out of focus. Um, and the trees as well in the distance are starting to lose their sharpness. Now in this next image, and apologies for Nick, I should have retaken this and uh, not taken it when she was blinking, but we're now at 100 millimetres. And you can start to see the trees are starting to bunch up and come look as if they're closer together. They don't look, certainly when you look at those first two trees on the right, they don't look as though they're 10 metres apart, but actually they are. Uh, and you can see that the people in the distance who are only sort of 20 meters away uh, have started to get very blurry and, and things in the distance are starting to lose their sharpness too. And finally, so this one is taken at 240 millimeters and you can see all the trees now in the background have gone blurred, the, even the closest one, and they're all stacked up against one another. Uh, and Nick is now, um, you know, her upper body is now filling uh, the whole frame. So the big difference you'll have noticed going from that very wide angle to this very uh, long um, telephoto at 240 millimeters is your depth of field has, has reduced dramatically but also your field of view has reduced dramatically and it's a creative decision and personally probably uh, and it's no surprise a lot of portrait photographers use lenses that are around about 100 millimeters or 70, 75 if you're using a crop sensor um, because that 100 millimeter distance gives you that kind of nice frame that um, uh, allows you to get a bit of the background in there to create some of the story uh, but the subject looks nice and sharp too. Now let's move on to looking at the images from the second part of the exercise. So this is the first one taken at uh, 12 millimeters and if you remember, I had to get really close up and it's obviously a very unflashing angle and having that super wide on lens, there's, there's quite a lot of distortion going on there. Um, it really doesn't make an attractive portrait at all. But it gives you the idea of how close you have to be with a wide angle and how much of the background is going to appear in there too. 
Now in the next image we're out to 24 millimeters so we've lost that uh, horrible distorted uh, look um, but we're still we were still pretty close um, and you can start to see there's um, it, it's be turning into a nicer image and you can see why some people might sometimes choose a wide angle lens um, to do an environmental portrait. Now as we get to 50 millimeters we're seeing very much the same image that our eye sees so it starts to become uh, much more realistic in a way uh, and this actually takes a nice image and you'll find that this is why people like photojournalists and the photographers of the past were pretty much stuck on these kind of 50 millimeter lenses because that's all the technology there was around at the time um, but it does create that very nice close-up you're in close to your subject um, and you can see there's still quite a lot going on in the background okay it's uh, we haven't got a big depth of uh, field or depth of focus here because we've decided to get close to our subject um, but that's the whole point our subject is leaping out of the photo at us now in the next image we're at 100 millimeters and again the background is a bit more blurry we're stood back a bit and you can see that the it, what it's helped to do by um, compressing um, things in the photo by having this longer focal length it does start to soften the features so um, this is why people choose this kind of focal length for portraits because it just creates that slight softness to the image and then finally the uh, the lens at 240 millimeters um, is everything in the background is completely lost so there's no story there whatsoever but that might be what you want um, personally I find it's a bit too long for taking uh, a portrait image but you can see what effect it's had on your composition it was difficult for me to get uh, get it set up just perfectly you know I've lost a bit of a of Nick's hair on the left hand side of the photo there but uh, other than that I still think it's it's quite a pleasing effect so which lens should you be going out to buy well as I said earlier on you're probably going to want one of three lenses and um, you're going to want this focal length range from wide angle up to telephoto at some point as your photography develops now if you started out with a kit lens at 18 to 55 you know, that will do you for quite some time and it depends on where your photography is going as to what lenses you would like you can get a lens that will cover the whole range and the one I used for uh, a chunk of the photos uh, that we took today was this one which is a 24 to 240 um, and the reason I bought this lens was predominantly for um, things like traveling because I don't want to carry uh, a lot of stuff around with me especially if I'm getting on a plane or something and because this goes from 24 to 240 it's covering from a wide angle right up to telephoto all with one lens um, so that's a very nice solution now the drawbacks to it are um, it's not optimized for any particular focal length and because it's trying to cover such a wide range um, then it's never going to be absolutely super sharp and it doesn't have um, very wide apertures you know it starts at uh, f3.5 for some of the focal lengths but that goes right up to f6.3 when I'm at 240 millimeters so I can never get some of the uh, low light photos that I might want but it's a great solution for traveling uh, it does produce some really nice photos um, so it is uh, something that you might want to consider particularly if you're buying a, a lens just to go uh, uh, use on your holidays to, to take travel photos if you've got the kit lens uh, and you're thinking about progressing to next levels then um, I would do it in one of two ways what is your main photographic interest at this point if you're interested in things like landscapes then chances are you're going to want to go for a for a wide angle lens um, something like 10 to 20 millimeters um, if you're using a crop sensor camera if you've got a full frame camera that might be uh, 14 to 24 or 16 to 35 they're both good options and I'll put some links uh, in the description of ones that I think are good um, there is a great wide angle lens um, a 10 to 20 millimeter from Sigma which works really well with crop sensor cameras uh, and I still use that a lot myself now 
If your interest is in wildlife or maybe sports photography where you want magnification then you'll be looking at a 70 to 200 or a 70 to 300. Um, now you can buy the own brand so if you've got a Nikon uh, camera you can buy a Nikon lens but there are also some great options from third parties. Sigma I've mentioned before, Tamron is another good company to look at. They often produce very nice um, third party lenses which will fit your camera. I've put links um, to the major manufacturers, Nikon, Canon and Sony, in the description. So uh, you've got a, a choice of lenses to go for if it's something uh, that you're ready to do now. Now, if you uh, just bought your first camera and you feel like you wanted to buy a better lens than the kit lens, then look for something that gives you a better range. And I would there are a lot of options around the 20 to 100 millimeters. Um, they're not too expensive. Uh, and they would give you a, a good option to get started with because it gives you a bit of telephoto so if you're into portraits and a bit of wildlife it'll get you started with that and going down towards the 20 millimeter range will give you some chance to do some landscapes and some wide angle stuff maybe some uh, buildings and architecture now finally if you uh, fancy yourself as a photojournalist and you want to do a lot of storytelling with your cameras then uh, look for you know a uh, uh, a nifty 50 or a 35 millimeter lens if you've got the crop frame sensor camera uh, and go for those the great thing about these is they're not too expensive they're much cheaper than uh, zoom lenses because they're, they're basically a simpler product and you will get some uh, super photos with them now one other great tip i can give you is um, go and look at secondhand lenses lens technology although it does change all the time um, the leaps and bounds it make are not that dramatic every year. So old lenses still have very good uh, optics inside them and can give you really, really great shots. And you can pick them up very cheap. Just make sure that they fit your camera body. But um, a lot of camera manufacturers kept the, um, the lens mounting mechanism the same uh, for years and years. And um, you'll find that you can buy um, some really old lenses that will still fit uh, a brand new camera made today. The best thing about them is you'll get them at a very reasonable price and you'll be, um, you know, particularly if you buy them from a reputable uh, camera shop, which has taken them as a trade-in, um, you can get some really good deals. They're still guaranteed and they'll tell you what the defects are. Maybe there's a little bit of dust in the lens or something, but it's probably something you won't notice on many of your photos. So if you've got uh, more questions about focal length or you'd like to share your photos, you can join the uh, Nifty 50 Photographers Facebook group and uh, I'll put a link in that, uh, a link to that group in the description. Uh, you can put your questions and your photos in there for comments and uh, I'll do my best to, uh, to help you with any questions you have. Um, there's a, and as I said, if you have enjoyed this video, um, do make sure you tell your friends, do hit like and do subscribe to the channel. And make sure you come back next time because we're going to be talking about focus. So how to make sure you get your, focus, your photos in focus every time and uh, what focus method you should be using. I'll see you then.